Hey, what's up you all? I'm Chris. I have autism here. And I'm going to be talking about some channels that I like, that I find very interesting. And uh, I want to start off with this one called Asperger's Syndrome. This is a 70 year this is a guy in his late 70s who talks about his life, you know, living with Asperger's and <coughs> and he gives some tips for People such as myself who are on the autism spectrum. <coughs> um, I really like his content. And um, I'll be showcasing some of it off. Just so you'll know. Get an idea. And as you see, I mean, I just started watching a lot of his videos. And... I mean, he's one of my favorite YouTubers. I like his content a lot. Um, but yeah, so here's one that um I haven't watched yet, obviously. But let's let's see some ones I've let's go and scour through some ones I wanna do continue watching but never got to finish okay <clears throat> all right let me go ahead and turn that volume up Number one is to identify your dominant emotion. Now, I've been doing some research trying to understand what is the underlying secrets of autistic behavior. And what I'm discovering is it's not that much different from neurotypical people. But it seems to be expressed differently. In other words, we have the same... As you can see, he starts off really interesting. He is really in tune to what he wants to talk about he's you can tell he's there's this genuineness just he's not trying too hard he knows what he wants to say I'm sure without a doubt he has got a script in front of him but if he doesn't I am truly impressed that he's coming up with this stuff at the top of his head if not I'm still impressed because for me to be able to articulate at his level I think I need to write a script. Right now, I'm not even writing. I don't even have a script. And he's able to articulate so well. And just started. And you can already feel that. You can feel this wave of gravitation. And you can tell he's just a very you know, likable person. I don't see why anybody would want to hate on this guy. He seems down to earth and very well spoken. Same emotions as everybody does. And just innate to humans. But I want to know what makes people who are autistic express those emotions a little bit differently. But to do that, number one is we need to identify which is the dominant emotion. Well, how many emotions? You can see quickly as you watch back, you can see how his eyes were focused, weren't focused on the screen. He was looking at something. So he probably had some things written down on paper, like topics he wanted to cover. So this is what I do sometimes if I'm going to really, you know, take this uh, whole articulation to a next level. Sometimes if I really want to be professional, I'll even write my. There's times if I wrote a script, and I'll I won't read off it at word by word, but I'll look at a topic that I want to cover, and there might be something that I'll add in there that I might want to add in the middle as I'm explaining things. Some I might want to say things a certain way that I find interesting, or I think others may find interesting. And tr and I try to throw that in there. I throw that in there and see how it kind of turns out. And sometimes, 
sadly, sometimes things don't work out the way I expect them to. They don't work as well as they do. And sometimes, you know, rarely do things work out the way I want them to. Or there's rare times that they work out even better than I expected. There are some things that I didn't think would work out too well. And I end up discovering that those things I didn't think would work well end up working well. So in the so in the midst of this all, it's bas I could basically say I'm still in the process of experimenting, still in the learning phase. Aren't we all still learning? Aren't we learning something new every single day? And as time goes by, you get better. You begin to learn what works and what doesn't. Like with the light bulb, it took um, <clears throat> it took Thomas Edison a th over thousands of attempts before to get the light bulb right. He made thousands of mistakes. Like Thomas Edison didn't just invent the light bulb in an instant. It, it took so many trials and errors. And sometimes that same thought, that same thing, can be said about how you articulate yourself as a YouTuber. You gotta go through a bunch of trials and errors before you can get it just right. Now moving on to another one. Um, there's this uh, person who I watch called Bithead1000. And you can see, like, I, what I love about this is the simplicity of his setup. Like, you can tell he doesn't have really have anything fancy, but, like, it, I mean, he has everything, all this cool stuff in his shed. It's nothing but a shed. It, I mean, it looks pretty damn cozy where he has it set up. He's got his paper roller right there. He's got some really awesome stuff laying around, some interesting stuff. Everything's hanging up, and it's just it's just a bunch of stuff in a shed, but somehow it works. He can make it work. It's how you present yourself. It's, it's, it determines the outcome of the video, and some people are just gifted with that ability. Some people just know how to start off. They know what makes it work. They just have that sense how things work thirteen years Thir it's amazing how sometimes you can say nothing and then say a little bit of something and that alone can become its own substance of of interest like how he started off it's like it was all kind of mellowed down and he just slowly kind of builds up it's like he tries to give make you he tries to make you feel some certain emotion and you're just curious and it makes you curious as to what where he's gonna get at with this he, what he I mean, what he's doing is smart is that he's not really throwing it out out there right away he's kind of holding off on it he's like okay let me get people to feel like there's going to be something interesting like let them, let them think that i'm going to say it right away but i'm going to kind of tease them a little bit and kind of take it slow so that they that they can so they stay so their eyes stay glued watching my content because if you talk about something and you say it right away too quickly then people are going to feel like they heard everything they need to hear and they're just going to move on to something else. So he's doing this some kind of whatever psychology technique he's using it's working because I'm sure glued to, uh, sure as hell going to be glued to it trying to wait, wait what he's got to say. Even the title itself has got me interested. So when is he going to start talking about Turbo Graph 16 shooters? But then he starts talking about things going on in his life, and you're like, okay. So you get a two-in-one deal. You get the his story, his tele-things, and sometimes 
it, sometimes some of these things just make you laugh. And then you get, and then you get the, the you know, the cherry on top, which is of course what the title, what the title says. Here he's going to start getting right down to it and start talking about it, giving his two cents on it. I tried this technique on giving my thoughts and opinion on a dating app. I started off by, you know, something stupid, something dumb. It was it was dumb enough and crazy enough to work. I mean, of course, of course, I got some mixed reviews about it, but hey, it it, it gravitated people. It's like okay, I kind of teased people a little bit. I kind of did. I kind of took that idea from him, and. This is how Tommy Lamana found my channel is because I made a video about this dating app. About how you're being uh, tricked into paying more for chats and all this stuff. And how, how that was that you dates was ripping off people. I made, I made that on my previous channel and it got like thousands of views. Like a hell of a lot more than most of my videos do. Thirteen years. So here we are, thirteen years later. Being January second, right? It'll be thirteen years. That's right. And what's changed? I don't know, my fucking hair. How about that one on for size? Ah, <sighs> man, brothers. It's you see his video? Like, it's, it's in, I find it interest. I find it very, you know, mind-boggling and puzzling how some people come, come off with this criticism on how I do my content. I've even had a, somebody who is, you know, a famous uh, adult entertainer. I'm not going to say any names, but she was telling, like, in the past, she had said that my that my con most of my content is dull and boring. That I don't that I should be a little show. I should show a little more. It might help if I show a little more excitement in my personality. Yeah, let's show a little more excitement. Let me smile as I'm talking about how fucked up my life can be. And all the fucked up shit going on. Let's talk about all the the fucked up crap that's going on in the world. Let's talk about terrorists and people getting killed and smile about it all at the same time so I can look like a fucking maniac. Yeah, let's do that. I've been doing this shit since uh, 2015. Look at where I got. I'm still. I mean. I'm, I mean. Well, there's other there's other YouTubers like Kent Peterson who's been doing it since 2006 and he only got like 600 subscribers like not everybody's videos are always entertaining but you might sometimes you're just not entertained by the content you're sometimes the content is in the person the per watching the person itself watching this person grow being subscribed to that person hear them talk about it even though what they talk about may not always be everybody's cup of tea you somehow psychologically grow a liking to them despite how much stuff it may lack like he doesn't have gameplay content he just simply started off calm and then he started talking about oh look at my fucking hairline how is that for a change I like his sarcasm I like how real he's being you can tell he's not that doesn't sound like he's playing around But at the same time, he'll play around. He'll be funny and throw in some little sarcasm and kind of lighten up the mood a bit. But at the same time, he's being real. Yeah, I mean, I could I could simply, you know, talk about something dramatic and then we'll switch the subject. Hey, let's talk about my, my penis. Let's talk about my penis and how, how strut I am right now. Yeah, I'm, ba I'm, I'm, I'm at the age where I'm getting sprung. Are you sprung, Chris? Are you, Chris? Are you sprung? Are you having a hard time getting it up, Chris? Are you sprung? Yes, I'm sprung. 
spreading like a damn slinky. Can't get this shit up. Gotta keep playing with it to get it hard. <laughs> it's no wonder some women lose patience with me. Shit, gotta, gotta, gotta keep like tapping on the damn head. It's like a dead snake. It's like when you reach that age where you can't get it up, that's when you know like your days are just numbered. It's like that's it. My days of being a a player are done, okay? My days of, you know, getting all the women are done. Okay, my my I'm sprung, my dick ain't working the way it used to. I'm I'm in almost in my forties, like what what the fuck is going on? You look down, you just wanna have an angry conversation, an argument with your penis and all it does is just hang there over your ball sack. Like I don't give a shit about you and you just start giving so you stop giving a shit about that and you just well, somehow manage and just continue to live on with your life without wanting to end it all because, like, miraculously, life is just amazing. Like, even when you're feeling down and 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 flaccid, <laughs> somehow in other ways you feel you feel like uh, even if you're not physically erected, you'll emotionally get erected. <laughs> so. I think we all got a little penis within us. <laughs> penis within us. <laughs> whatever you say, whatever. Fuck, let's just watch his content. New Year. You supposed to be excited about a New Year? Is that the story? I don't know. I go to a New Year's Eve party. People jumping up and down. Happy. I said, what's going on here? How come I'm not doing the same thing? Hey, it's 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 bizarre how some how some people get get are gravitated towards drama. Drama makes the world go round. I mean, you ever listen to the the Fred Durst music? You ever listen to Fred Durst, aka Limp Biscuit? One of his song one in one of his songs, one of the lyrics he sings is like, "Drama, drama makes the world go round." Like uh, da, 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 I forgot the rest of it, but it's been a, it's been a hot minute. I'm not gonna even try to think of it. But yeah, um, drama makes the world go around. It does. People love. They say bad news is the best news, and it's proven to be true. Like people love bad news. They hear good news, and they're like, oh, okay. You talk about bad news but then what's what's even what really fucks me up is that i know i'm right when i say that drama makes the world go around and that bad news is always is usually the best news most of the time it is and then you got somebody that makes you feel like an idiot by telling you that your content's dark and dull it's it's and it just it lacks interest like okay I'm not going to be, you know, stop doing what I do just because a few people tell me, oh, your videos are not interesting. Like, okay, I don't need you telling me that because I can see it in the fucking numbers on the views I got. And, uh, secondly, um, everybody's in, everybody's got their own opinion. So you're, just because you got an opinion doesn't always mean you're right. Being, having an opinion doesn't mean you're right. It just means you have your own outlook on things. It doesn't make you right. It doesn't make you correct. And I can simply say that my videos are not boring. They're not. They're not dull. But I'd just be. I'd be just as right as you. Or I. If I were to say that my videos are not interesting, and they're not dull, I. I'd, I'd be just as correct as those who say otherwise because after all it's just an opinion and opinion is not a fact you can't be you can't be factual you can't talk about the same thing and make it a fact and opinion at the same time it just doesn't work it's either you it's either an opinion or it's not I was so miserable. Number one, my bedtime, it's like 7.30, 8 o'clock tops. 
You got me out at 12 midnight. I, I... <sighs> Between Christmas and, and New Year's, it's just like drink caffeine all day and then go out to a party. But look, this guy is talking about his life and giving his thoughts about New Year's, like how he how uninterested he is in New Year's, like what he's talking about has nothing to do with the topic of the video. Most people would be like, aren't you going to talk about uh, Turbo Graphics 16 shooters? But no. Within the first minute and, and 50 seconds of the video, which is an hour long, you want to talk about your stuff going on in your life, which has nothing to do with the title of the video. I'm not criticizing the, the person. I mean, I've been I've been a subscriber to his con his channel for years now, for at least five or six years, and this is all how he's always done it. But it makes it interesting because you get hit with something you don't expect, and sometimes the unexpected could be could be it could be a, a substance of entertainment within itself. At least from my perspective. And it's like drink, then eat sugar, then go sneak a cigarette here and there. And it's like, okay, what's the next fucking vile thing I can do to my body? I was I sat there, I was on an arm railing and I was resting on the arm railing. I was more kind of holding myself up. And I said, What are you doing? I said, It's like it's like I wait. Almost like I'm on schedule. It's like, okay, uh, okay, let's find alcohol now. Pour alcohol down your throat. Okay, check. And what's that over there? Oh, it's, uh, you know, pie, ice cream, and cake, and cookies. Down the hatch. And, uh, oh, there's my brother-in-law with, the, uh, with the cigarettes. Hey, let's have a cigarette outside. It's like... Merry Christmas. And then, and then you get to the end of the cigarette, and then you're sitting there, and you're like, okay, uh, what's next? M, 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 M. So this, for New Year's, I said, that's it. Right, I could totally relate to this, because that's like how my New Year's is. Like I'm doing the same thing I do every single day. I just most of The highlight of my day would either be making a video on YouTube, doing a Let's Play, going to the store, shopping for junk food, or whatever, even though it goes against my diet, like I haven't really been buying junk food. The furthest I went, I've been to buying junk food so far is just buying Diet Coke. <laughs> but other than that, like, if I'm not doing all that, I'm, I'm smoking a cigarette. I'm doing what I do all the time. And this, and in 20, 2023 ain't that much different. 2024 ain't that much different than 2023, and it's been like that forever. Like. You get all hyped up for the New Year's thinking that something exciting is going to happen. Then you just sit there and just uh, like, okay, so we have, we, we pop a bottle of champagne. We have a cup, we have a recuperate dish. We have a couple of meals. That's great. But then after all that's done, you're like, okay, we, we, we just ate. We just stuffed our faces. Like I could have done that at the buffet, but hey, this is once in a time, life, once in a year thing that happens. But it's like you expect something grand to come of it. It's like okay, it's just something we could have done every single day. Like I could, I could just buy a bunch of tacos and call it a holiday. <laughs> I could hold buy I could hold, buy a whole box of pizza like I always do and call it a fucking holiday. And then every day would be a fucking holiday. And if every day was a holiday, then no day is a holiday. So what is it? He's got a point. Like a New Year's Day is just another day. <laughs> It's like doesn't bring about anything special unless you already had something planned out from the get go. But who's gonna go through all that trouble? Like, okay, I had plans to go out to eat. I could just go out to eat any any day of the year. And then I do it at the end of the year. It's the same thing as what I would do any any other day. So yeah, I see his point. Like, I totally agree with Bithead on this one.
That's it. We're ad- we're adding cocaine to the list. Right. No, I said that, that's it. I said I'm cutting everything out. I'm cutting everything out. Guys, can I have coffee, please? <laughs> I am coffee. Like only if like you don't want to do cocaine, like, but yeah, I, I mean, sarcastically speaking, <laughs> I love the sarcasm. I just love it. Like, and let's all just do cocaine. Yeah, let's all just get the shots of of Hennessy and see how that goes. But no. Nope. Not going through that. Not going through that jibber jabber. Not going through that triple. No. You're not Tony Mantena. But I do. I don't have cocaine, but I do have coffee. And it does bring some level of comfort. I'll just sip on that coffee. But nothing says. Nothing says. Uh, coffee like coffee. I don't know how else to put it. Like. Okay. And it says I want to be relaxed and energized at the same time like coffee. Which is, you know, a perfect substitution for cocaine if you ask me. I mean, it doesn't have the same effects, but, you know. Hey, at least you got something in your system, right? Better than nothing. By the, water, by the way, we have the new coffee warmer in tow over here. Yeah, that's right. You didn't know we lived in the lap of luxury over here? That's right, at 28 degrees! I don't know. My whole house is sick. <coughs> Everybody's been sick since Christmas. I don't, well. I, I've been sick since the beginning of time. That's right. I've had a hacking cough for two months straight now. World record in my life. And I try to t- tell other people, and they're just like, hmm. I said, no, you don't understand. I'm sick for like two months, and it's been everybody, uh, every other person's complaint online, social media, that they've been sick for, for months on end. And then people look at you like, hmm. Hey, did you see the Jets game? I'm like, no, you you don't find that unusual? No, no, nobody finds that odd. Yeah. Is that okay? So what he's hey, basically listen. So what he's basically saying is that people would rather live, pretend that everything's all happy and hunky dory, and want to shift their mind to something else rather than face reality. Say so they just want to ignore all the problems that reality's thrown at us, and they just want to live in a fucking fantasy rather than face the problem, try to face the problems head on, or try to figure out why it is the way it is. And you want, and you like, you don't, you need wonder why the some like the Earth is going in a shithole in a handbasket. You wonder why the Earth is going in a shitstorm, like what they say. This this place is going to hell in a handbasket. But I don't believe in hell. But if I did, that would be it. Like how the earth's going to hell in a handbasket. It's going to a shit show. It's going straight down the shitter. But everybody wants to pretend that that's not happening. They want to ignore the problem and just, you know, rather, rather than face it, they just rather... Pretend that everything's okay. So just watch the world come around us and nobody's going to give a damn. Because, hey, you know what? 2024, right? Maybe I'm living in a parallel uh, dimension here. (laughs) You're telling me. I think I woke up in the Twilight Uh. Zone. I don't know. My wife gets COVID. And then she's telling me, ah, you got to run out and get test kits. I'm like, I don't know. You got COVID. I probably have it too. Everybody probably has it. Who cares? 
What happens at the end of the test kit? I have COVID. Yeah, but there's an idea. Like, a lot of my inspiration comes from this guy right here, which is why I like to make drama videos, like, or just videos. To I mean, I even my a lot of times when I talk, I don't even make plan to make the videos drama. It's just that when I talk about something and really get into it, it just becomes drama. It just even I mean it's un it's unintentional. Most of the time it's just unintentional. I'm not even thinking about what what the outcome is. I'm just saying, hey, you know what? I'm doing a video. I'm talking about what interests me. And you know, when somebody says something like, "Oh, your videos are boring and they're dull and they're dark," yeah, I'm talking about some miserable shit. So no shit, Sherlock. Of course they're fucking miserable. Of course they're dark. Of course they're dull and boring because all the if I'm talking about some real shit going down. Then yeah, it's it's going to be boring. It's what sh you should expect from a video. It's sh it's what you should expect from a video like this. But I'm talking real, and I'm not joking around. It should be boring. It shouldn't be entertaining. But however, it should be gravitating to some degree. But people's idea of entertainment is like oh. We should just ignore all the world's problems. We should just talk about, do food reviews. Let's do all this and that. Let's play, let's be excited. Let's just be a bunch of, ch let's be like a bunch of children and just playing fucking Candyland and ignore the reality rather than talking about it. Oh my gosh. Talk about being out of touch with reality. It's like I'm the only one. I feel like I'm the only one who's woke, and everybody's just like, okay, they're in their own little world. Now I'm the only one who's seeing this. Who's, you know, like okay. But everybody wants to pretend. Every and when you're not, if you're not following with them, if you're not playing with them, they want to complain that you're not playing along with them. If you're not interested in what everybody else else is interested in, you become an outcast. It's like, oh, if you're not pretending with them, then they go against you. Like a pack of damn wolves. They want to fucking eat you alive. But yeah. That's about that. That's basically the gist of it all. Yeah, this is one of the few channels that I've like watching and then there's another one called Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight. Love his stuff. Love his content. Love what he talks about. And a lot of people have given a flat for it saying that his videos are are not as happy as they used to be. They he doesn't do his Francis videos. He's always talking about his his medical problems, his struggles, but yeah, but that's what I, that's one of the reasons why I like Boogie tonight. He, not only does he just talk about that, but he's done some things, like he's done some things that help that kind of add to that. I mean, people want him to keep being Francis, keep being this jo jolly good guy. But I like that he's, you know, talking about things and educating people and and just, you know, giving an, an open sense of knowledge on these things and just, you know, telling stuff about stuff going on in his life and, you know, even bringing his girlfriend into this and just being real and genuine and that's what I love about this content that's what I love about watching Boogie tonight he's genuine he's real he's not trying to coat sugarcoat shit but the people who grew watching his stuff in the past him playing this character Francis and all and if they see anything anything slightly different from what he was providing oh my gosh they they've all you know get all mad they all go crazy and it's like they all just start attacking him because he's not doing the same st the stuff that he started off doing. 
the stuff that they grew to like watching. People just love to pretend. And that's what I've learned about. That's what I learned in this past seven years is that people just want to escape reality. They don't want to talk about anything remotely real. They just want to either do food reviews, they want to do something stupid like a Taiba challenge, or they just, or just, you know, just be out of touch with reality, period. Alright, and this next one I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to go to Tommy Lamada. Tommy Lamada. Like, I mean, this is somebody who I'm friends with, somebody who I talk to, um, and I've, I've helped with this one. I've actually, this video, I've actually took part in. I mean, I took part in uh, providing the audio for this video, and I and because I collaborate with Tommy, we both do live streams from time to time. Um, we exposed a, a, a we exposed a person who was a rapist. We we I've helped with that by you know recording and sending out the audios and and you'll see in this video as we watch into it. This is one um, I helped with. Uh, go subscribe to Tommy Lamata. He's an awesome YouTuber. Go provide. He's very. Come on, man to man. Just me and you talk for a minute. How about it, man? Oh. Come on. Hold on. Let's, let's start from the beginning. Hey. What? Tommy wanted to talk to you for a second. I. No. I don't. I don't know what to say. How no, there, man. He said, "What are you doing?" I'm telling you, good night, and I love you because it's over. Come on, come on, man. Come on, just talk to me, man to man. Marcy, come on, man to man. Just me and you talk for a minute. How about it, man? Come on, come on, man. Why not, man? I'm gonna give you. I'm not gonna give you what you want. I'm not gonna give you your video. Oh, I didn't know you meant video call or video. I didn't know what you meant. You but, but yeah, I recorded this audio. He's not going to give you what you want. But you know what? He did. Because I was, you know, keeping quiet. I was behind the scenes. And little did he know that I was there in that chat room recording this thing the whole time. And I've gotten a tremendous compliment from, you know, some very useful sources. Which, you know, I'm not going to point out any names because, you know... Some of these people want to keep their names um, anonymous, so to speak, for security purposes. So I'm going to respect their, I'm going to respect their decision on that. If they want their name out there, they want me to say their name, I will. But I'd rather ask their permission rather than put their name out there. So that's that. You only said video. Y'all are trying to video me, so no. You know who Lisa Ann is? She's got your number, man. I don't need you on video. I got Lisa Ann. And when she puts you in the podcast, everybody's going to know who you are, and she can legally do it. That's the next step. He's saying he's going to blast you. They're going to blast you. Do you know who Lisa Ann is, the porn star? You don't mind that, do you? No, You want her to put your name under podcast? He doesn't care. He doesn't care? Okay. Babe, Kristen Um said it like. You don't care if they blast you. 1230 tomorrow, right? You don't care if they blast you? No, I don't give a, I don't give a damn. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. We'll do that. Thank you. Good job. There you Rapist. go. That's what I needed to do. Yep. I did. And you know what? The fucking thing, messed up thing about it is, I didn't know he was going to say that, but I kind of had a feeling because he told me, he goes, I don't care if they blast me. I don't care what they do because you're a bitch. I said, oh, I'm a bitch now after me supporting the account this whole time and falling for you and you're a sex offender? Oh, okay, I'm the bitch now, right? Okay. So, yeah.
it's it is that I was very that's when I I helped record all that audio and I provided the audio for that the audio you were hearing that that, that was all that I did that I recorded that audio me and Tom Lamada are really good friends we're just we're just tight we help each other's YouTube content we just help each other out with all sorts of things we talk about all sorts of stuff and I've been featured on this channel live multiple times and I've even had him on live live on my other channel multiple times if just in case you didn't know I had I have a channel that has like over 180 subscribers on it called dude 4786 I have autism but somehow somebody must have hacked into it because I ha I can't access that channel anymore it's like and I didn't forget the password because I've been using the same password for about two years so like I don't know for some reason I'm kind of locked out of that channel and I have to come back to this one which is you know this channel was originally the one I started on from the get-go before creating the dude 4786 I have autism channel which I'll show you which I have no longer have access to sadly but it is what it is see oh well anyways that's gonna be it for this one uh, this is my, giving my thoughts and opinions on some of the youtubers that I like watching and how and these are some of the youtubers I get inspiration from who I get you know who who I I who I just kind of who just inspired me these are some of the youtubers who inspired me and you could tell that the way I do my content like some of the ideas were kind of they give me like their ideas the way they did it give me ideas of how I want to do my video so like okay I want to kind of do I want to I don't want to be called a copycat but I want to kind of do what he's doing because what he's doing I like it and I'm interested and I want to do that because that looks like fun I want to see I want, I want to see how that rolls out so it's always fun to experiment and always interesting to experiment like that and stuff so yeah so that's gonna be it and yeah I am using Bandai cam by the way anyways thanks for watching y'all and uh, peace